Hi friends, you are back with me, Professor Girish Kukreja. Today, we will be talking about one of the most commonly used uh, biochemical methods for estimation of total proteins in the given sample. Uh, yes, you might have guessed it correct. It is the Lowry's method where we use this fallen CO Calto reagent. So, therefore, sometimes uh, generally people also call it as the fallen Lowry's method. The method was actually described by Lowry in his paper in 1951, which is one of the most highly cited paper in the scientific literature. After his paper, though the reagent he gave in 1940s, his paper where he described this method in 1951 is one of the most highly cited paper in the scientific literature which has been cited more than 3 lakh times. Right. So, let us go to the questions which you may be asked with uh, in the viva for these particular practicals. So, the first one it says, enlist the reagents used in this particular Lowry's method of protein estimation and their composition. So, we prepare two reagents, one is your uh, alkaline reagent and uh, alkaline copper sulphate reagent and other is the fallen CO calcium reagent which is actually a, a commercial uh, preparation which is available in the market. So, for preparing the alkaline copper sulphate reagent, you prepare it in this way where you take 20 grams per liter of sodium carbonate in 0.1 mole per liter of your NaOH. So, remember prepare 0.1 mole per liter of your NaOH first. In that, now you add sodium carbonate at the concentration of 20 grams per liter of your sodium carbonate, right? So, say for example, if I have prepared 100 ml of this, I will add 2 grams of sodium carbonate. So, uh, if you talk about NaOH, sodium 23, oxygen 16, hydrogen 1, molecular weight is 40. So, you are going to prepare 0.1 mole per liter. So, if you have prepared 100 ml, you are going to add 2 grams. If you have prepared 1 liter, you are going to add 20 grams. Mention in the comment box that how you are going to prepare 0.1 mole per liter of your NaOH. Let us check that. In the second case, you are going to prepare 5 gram per liter of copper sulphate in 10 gram per liter of sodium potassium tartrate, which we also refer to as the Rochel salt. So, first I will prepare 10 gram per liter of sodium potassium tartrate. So, say for example, if I am preparing 100 ml, I will add uh, say 1 gram. If I am preparing 10 ml, I uh, will add only say 0.1 gram accordingly. I will add this at the concentration of 5 grams per liter. So, if this 100 ml, hai, this you will add 0.5 grams. Yeah, agar 10 ml one hai, this you will add 0.05 grams. So, like this you will calculate and you will prepare. To prepare this alkaline uh, copper sulphate working reagent, you are going to mix 50 ml of this and 1 ml of this. So, if it is 100 ml of this, it is 2 ml of this accordingly. So, this is your alkaline copper sulphate reagent. The good news is that this fallen CO calcium reagent is commercially available. So, banana nahi hai. But then at least you should know what it contains. It actually contains sodium tungstate and sodium molybdate in phosphoric acid and hydrochloric acid. So, this is the basic composition of this fallen CO calcium reagent. Remember that this particular reagent most of the times in most of the experiments you dilute it in 1 is to 1 concentration. So, if you want 10 ml of this FC reagent, take 5 ml of this commercial reagent and 5 ml of your water. So, that will give you a ready to use FC reagent. Prepare all the reagents freshly, remember. Next one, what is used as the standard stock solution? So, to estimate the protein, uh, most commonly used standard is your BSA, bovine serum albumin. Sometimes in the bottle you will have written as albumin fraction 5. So, you can use that too. So, it is your bovine, same. So, it is your bovine serum albumin. So, this you will prepare at the concentration of 0 0.2 milligram per ml. So, in 1 ml you have 0 0.2 milligram. So, that means if you are preparing 100 ml of your stock, you are going to add uh, say 0 0.2 uh, grams of this. So, it is 0 0.2 milligram per ml which gives you a concentration of 200 micrograms per ml. So, this is the standard stock solution. So, to prepare as I told, uh, if you are 100 ml if you are preparing, you are going to add 0 0.2 grams of this. So, this is your BSA that is your standard stock solution. Uh, yes, this is the most basic question which you may be asked with is the state the principle of this method. This actually uses the uh, what you call as um, principle actually implies of biuret method also because it uses this alkaline copper sulphate reagent. So, the first color which you get is also because of the alkaline copper which is reacting with the protein. 
uh, which gives that mau color uh, you may look up at our other videos where you have described this biorate reaction so alkaline copper reacting with the protein as in the biorate reaction that also takes place the cuprous ion that is produced now it causes the reduction of phosphomolybdate and tungstate by this tyrosine and your tryptophan so this is basically answered by the aromatic amino acids sometimes it is also told that cysteine also is involved in the reduction of this phosphomolybdate and your uh, what you call as tungstate so it is the what you call as various active groups for example if you are talking about cysteine uh, then it is the sulfhydryl group of the cysteine which will be uh, reacting if you are talking about uh, say tyrosine then in that case it is the phenolic group of the tyrosine if you are talking about tryptophan then it is the indole group of tryptophan which reacts with this phosphomolybdate and tungstate to form heteropolymolybdenum blue or sometimes also simply referred to as molybdenum blue some call it as tungsten blue so this particular compound is directly what you call as proportional to the amount of these aromatic amino acid and to some extent the cysteine present in that particular protein so that color the extinction it can be measured at around 660 nanometer in certain books you will find that is 750 nanometer so somewhere in between 650 to 750 you can take the absorbance and you will get the what you call as results the amount of the color produced depends on the amount of these amino acids in that particular protein so higher are the amino acid content higher is the protein content darker will be the color and higher will be the absorbance so this is the basic relationship of this particular color form that is heteropolybdenum polymolybdenum blue yes the next one state few advantages and limitations of these methods so it is a simple method you can do it at a room temperature does not involve heating boiling or any such thing it is very sensitive it is 10 to 20 times more sensitive than the other traditional methods basically it also has few limitations like uh, it uh, what you call as Uh, has many agents which can interfere with the color which is formed so it may be your strong acids it may be your ammonium salts uh, so they may interfere uh, in the formation of this particular color the method is photosensitive so most of the times the incubations they are done in dark or if there is an illumination you have to be sure that there is a constant illumination uh, uh, throughout the entire procedure so the method is photosensitive so you have to take care of this particular light uh, the major drawback here is that it varies with different proteins because this is answered by a uh, few component amino acid that is tyrosine tryptophan to some extent cysteine so as the content of these particular amino acid varies the intensity of the color produced for different proteins at the same concentration is also sometimes different uh, so these are some of the few questions for uh, the estimation of total proteins by lowry's method stay tuned with us for more in biochemistry microbiology and life science in general thank you